All right, so we've talked about work during class, but now let's talk about work done by a variable force. That is, what if your force is in something nice and neat, like five newtons, or I'm sorry, if, if the force is like changes depending on where you are, then we can't use what we used to use. We said work was uh, force times distance times the cosine of the angle between them. Remember that? But what if force is not a constant? Then I can't use this. Well, to show what we can do, I'm going to show you something kind of cool um, with this constant force first. So let's say I took this constant force and I graphed it versus x. Well, since it's constant, the force doesn't actually change. So what I would get is I would get a constant value of 5 no matter where I was. So I'd, I would get a straight line like that. Okay, well, that's very well, all we're very well and good. Now let's say that I wanted to find the work done if I pushed the box from a position of say two meters to five meters. Okay, well, traditionally speaking, I could use this equation if I assume that the angle between the force and the distance I'm pushing is uh, zero, then I can assume that work is the force times the, uh, basically the, the distance I pushed it. So I pushed it from, um, from two to five, so I pushed it three. So I've got five newtons times five minus two. Basically what I've got here is five times three, so that 15 um, joules of work. Okay, but take a look at this. I've got um, x on the x-axis, ha, huh? the horizontal axis, force on the vertical axis. Check out this rectangle. Rectangle. Interesting here, huh? Um, if I wanted to find the area of that triangle, or rectangle, I would do length times width. Well, let's see, area. Area equals length times width. In this case, what I've got here is I've got a length that's one, two, three meters. And I've got a width, because I kind of went the other, anyway, anyway, that's two, four, five newtons. Well, that's interesting. Look what I get. I get 15 um, newtons times meters is kilogram meters squared per second squared. That's a joule. Well, that's interesting. Look at that. They're the same. In fact, if you graph force versus position, the area under the graph, under the curve, is the work done. Now, we've heard about areas under the curve before. It's been a while, but we have. Turns out that work, well, it's the area under the curve of force versus x. That is an integral, area under a curve. Turns out work is equal to the area under the curve of force if force is a function of x. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember functions or not. Okay, um, but that means that it's like f equals something with x in it. So for example, let's say I had a function where force was, I don't know, x squared minus three. Yeah. Okay. So this means like when I was at a position of zero, the force would be negative three. If I was at a position of one, the force would be one squared minus three, negative two. 
If I was in a position of 2, the force would be positive 1. So notice the force is different depending on where I am. And there are a lot of forces that work this way, including spring forces, which we'll be talking about next. Okay, that means that the work done is integral of x squared minus 3 dx. See, all I've done is I've taken this f of x thing here and replaced it with the function of for force with respect to x. Now, I'm not quite done. Notice, frankly, this could go on forever. If I were to graph this, I would get a, a, a parabola, okay, and it goes on forever. Where do I stop? So I need a place to start and a place to stop. So on here, my place to start with was 2, and my place to stop was 5. So what I really should say is the work is the integral of f of x dx from your initial position to your final position where your limits are the place you started to the place you finished. Notice if you start and stop at the same place, you will get an integral of zero. That is why if you um, start and stop at the same point, your work is zero. Okay, so let's say I want, um, I want the work done between let's say negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, that means my limits would be negative 3 to positive 1. Okay, so then I have to do the integral. Now it's been a while since we did any integrals, but if it's a polynomial, it's not that hard. Um, you take the old, uh, old exponent add 1 to it. So instead of x to the second, be x cubed. And then you divide by the new, the new um, exponent. Okay, minus 3. Now this used to be x to the 0th. So this becomes x to the first, and then divided by 1, we, it basically goes away. Now since I have limits, I don't have to do that plus c weirdo thingy. Instead, I do this funny vertical line and I put the limits back on. And then when I actually, to actually get a number out of this, I put the, um, the top number in. So I get 1 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 1. OK? And I subtract. I do the same thing, but with the bottom number. So I get negative 3 cubed over 3 minus 3 times negative 3. OK, so what I have here is I've got 1 third. I've got minus 3. This is interesting. Well, 3 cubed, I'm sorry, negative 3 cubed is negative 27. But then I divide by 3. So I get negative 9. But it's a minus a negative 9, so it ends up being plus 9. Then over here I've got um, negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, but I've got minus that whole thing, so I am just with minus 9, um, so these are gone. And what I have is 1 third minus 3, so what is that? That's negative, uh, oh gosh, 5 thirds? Negative 5 thirds? I'm, nope, nope, that's not right. Oh, wow, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't add fractions. <laughs> okay, I'll just do it the long way. Minus three ninths. Oh no, nine nine thirds. Oops, nine thirds. Okay, that's negative eight thirds. There we go. I got it. I got it. Okay, negative eight thirds of a joule. Uh, notice that I ended up with negative work. If I do negative work on something, that means that in the end I took energy out of it. It might have given its energy to me, maybe to do work on me instead. Okay. Um, anyway, we will do more with this later, but for now, what you really, really, really need to know is this right here.
Wee. Alrighty. Talk to you later.